All right, High Rollers, it's been a while since we've had this guy on, and I feel it's about time we got some ramblings from the Rocky of Darts. We've come to know and love him as Aki Balboa on Twitter, where you'll find him as T. Aki Master, which I think means the Aki Master. The master of Twitter of late as well hasn't been banned in quite some time. I like that. Chris, welcome back, man. Thanks for being our High Roller today. Thank you very much for having me on. It's a pleasure to be here. Listen, we've got a lot to get to here, man. This wasn't planned. I just thought I'd touch base and get your thoughts on a few darts-related topics. A lot's happened since the last we spoke. Let's start with the PDC season. Is it just me, or is it about time that we brought the fans back? I mean, the past year has been oh. strange. It's been weird. I'm not going to lie, but having said that, Full credit to the PDC, absolutely, for doing truly a fantastic job in keeping things moving along best it can. I mean, darts has been better off than most sports, more fortunate in that regard. But come on, man, it's time for the fans to come back. Absolutely. I think it's the British coronavirus plan is, is, is going too slow, and I think they could bring back fans, even if it's part of, uh, you know, 50% capacity. It's not the same. It's just very, it's very tinny. It's just not the same. I don't like the fake crowd noise. It's the same in football in this country as well. Fake noise is just, I just don't like it at all. Yeah, I don't think darts as sport in the last 12 months, although credit to the PDC for, for getting things on and getting everybody safe and everybody like that, everything like that. It's just not been the same and it's just not, not had the same feel. I criticised the crowds beforehand, but you don't often miss them when they're not there. Yeah, you don't know what you've got until you lose it, right? The crowd did take some criticism, especially with regards to Gerwin Price. I mean, he gives it. They gave it back. He got mad. I mean, the fans are a good thing. It brings the atmosphere. It livens things up. You never know what you're going to get. It's just great when there's a terrific darts match on the go, both players firing, and the fans are totally enthralled. Yeah, I mean... If the crowd are invested in the match rather than thinking about Yaya Torre, it adds to the appeal of the game and the sport. It's just that sometimes the crowd don't do that and, and it feels like the darts match is a side event and it's just it, it's just a shame really because they are good players and they deserve the crowd's attention at nearly all times. I think we've noticed a few things though without the fans. I mean, let's talk for one about MVG. He's been having a tough yeah. time of late, MVG Nation suffering all kinds of woes on social media. <laughs> the sky is falling in their world. But something tells me, without the fans, he's sort of laid back a little. It's been tough for him. When they come back, I feel he's going to resume his game. Maybe not to where it was, but pretty damn close. Yeah, I think um, MVG time to dominate is over. I, he, he will still be a contender, he'll still be a good player, he'll still put in their averages and he'll still be around top five in the rankings, but he's not going to dominate anymore. This has proved that, that um, the fans were on his side and it helped him. And um, since they've, they've gone, he's just, he hasn't really done much yet. He's won the Players' Championships and um, got to a final or something else. But um, his standards have slipped and he, they're running out of excuses, the MVG crowd, and it's just, he's not going to be a major player, it, you know, he's not going to be the, the main dog anymore, and I think it's telling, and, and the next 12 months, it'll be almost the same, he'll get knocked out tournaments early, he'll, he'll go to, so he gets to semi-finals, he may even get to a he may even win something, but he's not going, he's not a full con conclusion when he's in the field, yeah, and darts is better for it in, in the long run. Well, I certainly love parody in darts where anything can happen and you have all these close matches. But let me ask you this. If it's not the lack of fans, then what is it? Has the fear factor gone? Yeah, I think so. Um, I think the sort of mystique went before coronavirus hit. Um, I think the World Championship final against Peter White, where Peter White just dominated him and I think um, from that point on the sort of fear factor's gone and a lot of players probably thought I could actually could, could get out there and beat him by playing my own game and you know people like Chis Chisnall in the World Championships in 2021 doing the same and Durham did it in 2019 and so forth and his, his mystique even before Corona is gone and he's, he's telling now that he's not going to dominate darts now I don't think he will ever 
Well, it's interesting with coronavirus and all the floor events, we've seen the emergence of some great players. Johnny Clayton, for one, the emergence of Dirk Van Dyvenboda, the Ober genius. We've witnessed the greatness of Dimitri, who is letting the darts world know that he's not here for a good time. He's here for a long time. So the storylines that have developed during the pandemic, some of them have been quite interesting. Yeah, and you could also add Jose de Souza for that as well. Absolutely. Uh, Before you answer that question, you bring up Jose. Let's talk about the counting. I mean, I know he recently won a Players' Championship event, said he had no miscounting, but that's part of his aura, isn't it? People love to see that because he's a regular guy. Yeah, he's got a good personality to him, and um, he's really likable, and he's a lot lot more likable than Jose Mourinho. His counting is a bit off, but I, I think there's, I don't think there's anything to write home about that. I just think he's, he's, he's playing that well that it doesn't really make a difference. It might make a difference in a crucial final. He's been dominating, well, not dominating, but he's been, a, he's been coming to fault when the fans aren't there. I'm interested to see what what happen when the fans are there. Uh, he should be a fan favourite. I think he will be a fan favourite, and I'll be interested to see how he responds to that. But we've certainly seen these storylines where a lot of players have got more playing time, they've been entered into some more events, and they've emerged as, you know, a pretty solid player and proven themselves. Yep. There's a lot of good players coming through, coming through now. You've got Dimitri, you've got um, Dimitri van der Ber, I think he's top of the Premier League, or, he's, or near the top. But he's been a very, very good player for a long while, and he's only just coming to the fore. He will be a major player in the next five to ten years. Johnny Clayton, I think he's coming into his purple purple patch of his career. I'm not sure what he'll win after after this, but um, I don't think this will last, and I don't think he'll be a, a, a major player like the others will. So, what you're going to see from him is the best. There's a couple of other of, other guys that are playing quite well at the moment. Um, I'm still waiting for the emergence of Gabriel Clements because I think Clements, once he gets gets going. Clements will be a top five player. I'm still waiting for that. So it's a lot of interesting things out there. It's the standard is is, is leveling off a little bit, but but there's a lot of people that can win a lot of things now. And um, in the short term, it's good for darts. But I think the long term, I think someone like Dimitri will dominate. Uh, Dimitri's got a great action. I'm a big fan of the way he throws darts. I wish he'd give it yeah. more, but you know what? To each their own. That's the way he plays. When he's precise, yeah. man, when he's in the zone, you just don't think he's going to miss. And during that Super Series event that he won, he was on 180, went triple 20, triple 20, and it was blocked yeah. triple 12 to leave double 12. I mean, when you're firing in stuff like that, you just don't feel like you're going to miss. No, he's going to be calm as well, as I mentioned before. He's just he's got a calm when he's throwing. He just like he doesn't really buckle under pressure which is a good thing, and he's, what, 27, I think now? So, you know, I think he'll be, he's going to be the main one. I'm, um, I'm not very good with predictions, as everybody on Twitter knows, but um, he'll, be the, he'll, be the, he'll be the number one, world number one in the next three or four years. Now, conversely, we've got to talk about Glenn Durant. Before that, though, yeah. I'd like to mention Bully Boy with his victory the other day in the post-match interview. He said something alarming to me that Dimitri doesn't deserve to be in the Premier League, that he does. And I was thinking, whoa, hold the phone, man. Hold the phone. I think Michael Smith is letting get get to him not being in the Premier League. He had an average 2020, so he didn't deserve to be there. The problem is that he's probably the most talented person in in darts, in the darting world. And, you know, know, his talent is is, immense. But... He's, he's mental ability, he's, he's um, willing us to win. There is, there is something really missing with him. And that interview was really bad because he, he, he was quite disparaging to Aaron Beanie. Aaron Beanie got to the semi-finals, his very first one, and that was too disparaging. There was no need for that. Yeah, trash talk, but trash talks for boxing. At the end of the day, just be a little bit more respectful, a little bit more respectful, because he isn't a bad guy. He's not somebody that... that um, that, that you know he's a bit horrible. He's not like that. He's, he's actually okay. He just needs to find his way, find his game, and become a fan favourite because he's got the ability. He, he throws one out his front and everything, and uh, the big finishes like 
he's shelling peas, as, as the expression goes. Uh, but he needs to find a way to make himself into a fan favourite and into a winner. And um, at the moment, he's still struggling to find that. I wasn't a fan of his comment to the interviewer as well. How long have you been in darts? I'll tell you what I am a fan of. His pace, his action, and when he's finding that red bit, he's one of the most electrifying players in the game. And I do believe that a major, if not the world championship, is in him. He's that good. He really is a fantastic player. Now, state of affairs for Duzza. Sad, really. (laughs) He's been struggling. He's a legend of the game, a three-time BDO champ. He is the defending champ of the Premier League. So this guy can play, but he's struggling. Yeah. It's not because people seem to think it was because he had COVID in, I think it was October. Form was was dipping before that. He was dipping at the World Match play. He got away with a couple of things like beating Vincent van der Voort. He felt that his form was beginning to slip there, but not on a not on an alarming scale this is now. I don't know. I don't know if there's some sort of psyche in, in, in Glenn Durrance thinking, thinking, I've achieved what I wanted, I've won something in the PDC, and he's naturally just switched off, everything's gone, and this is what is going to happen now. He's going to be, I don't know if it's going to be like a Wes Newton type of player where he just stumbles down the rankings and loses his tour card. I don't know. But the next six months is crucial for Durrance. Not saying... He, needs, he will win anything or get close, but, but if he gets big wins on the Pro Tour, in, in the World Match Play, in the World Grand Prix, then he'll be okay. It, it's a big six months for him, really. You know, I was wondering that as well. He wins the three titles at the Lakeside, but this all happens while the PDC is on the go. People question him, doubt him, will he ever make it in the PDC? Comes over, yeah. wins the Premier League, so perhaps in his mind... He's reached the top. He's proven it. He's yeah. done it. He's been there, done that. You know, the pinnacle. Yes, and, and, and maybe he's, he's subconscious saying, "I've done it now, Glenn. I've done it now." Um, you don't really need to prove these to prove these idiots wrong again. I've done it, and, and you proved him right by being a great player in the PDC. He's done it. That's probably what he is. So, it's, as I say, it's an interesting six months coming up for him. Yeah, let's hope he comes back with a vengeance and and keeps his position, keeps playing some great stuff, keeps on winning. I know you want to talk about Modus. What do you want to talk about? Um, I think what Modus are doing is pretty good. They uh, they're getting certain players to play face to face every week, and they they're putting putting along a lot of lot of um, good matches, and you know it's helping people who are who are just outside the pro tour when they get to the Pro Tour, so you could look, for example, Robert Thornton, he played really well one week, got into the Pro Tour and had a good week in Germany. So it's things, it tells you things like that. I mean, you've got Martin Adams, who's playing really well, he's averaging 94 as a 64-year-old. It's just amazing what he does. And there's a lot of younger players that got experience as well, because outside the Pro Tour at the moment, there's nothing going on. So I think modern starts, they need a good pat on the back, really, because... They've provided darts for everybody who was on the fringes or who are, are key players in the WDF, like Adams and um, Hogan and, and, and people like that. So it's, it's, it's good watch. I don't watch it all day. I don't watch it every day. But um, I look at the scores. I look at the averages. And um, the standard's fine. It, it's just going to be up and down. But uh, I don't know. I tell them to modest. It's a good thing, good thing they do. Yeah, I I agree with you 100%. I have it on a lot. I'm not always watching, but I have it on. And I saw a Modus yeah. post the other day about Sean Fisher, I believe his name is, unknown to me, but he fired in a 102. So what this floor time, yeah. what this extra play is giving these players, some of them you've never even heard of perhaps, it's giving them the competitive yeah. advantage because they're getting those games in. Yeah, I mean, Sean Fisher was quite unlucky not to get a tour card this year, so this, this, this type of thing will be helping him if, if he gets the call up on the Pro Tour or, or, or on the Challenge Tour if he plays when the WDF's back on. It will help him for, for, for Q score next year as well. I mean, I think once coronavirus is, is, is gone from people's minds and stuff like that, and the WDF comes back with events, Darts is in a much better place than it was when the BDO were, were running a, a boost. So, so things things like that will, would be beneficial. And they say that Modus are going to be continuing this for a good couple of years. That's a good thing. Pat on the back to Modus. Excellent job during the pandemic. What's not excellent 
is some of the things you see on Twitter, which brings me to social media and darts. Several players have had abuse thrown their way. Wayne Martle recently announced that he's done with Twitter. I mean, dart players are using Twitter. They're seeing the comments. What do you think? What do you make of it? Well, um, it's a bit of a different one for me while I'm coming from is that um, a lot of darts players don't really like a criticism or, or, or things get thrown at them. Like, um, so some average Joe comes on the Twitter and says, I think such and such is player is thrown too quick. Oh, you're not good enough. You're not a good player. You're not a good player. So why, why should I listen to your opinion? It's just an opinion. And I think some people seem to think that if you say something about a dark player, even if they're four by think it's, it's like abuse, but it's not. Wayne Mardell is a strange one because Wayne Mardell, throughout time, has um, been given a lot of, it gives, uh, gives out a lot of stick. And um, when he gets it back, he do not like it. So I find him really strange that he does that type of thing. And Jamie Lewis thing was um, was interesting because when he played on the modest thing and then he didn't play well, he was pretty poor. He got he got a lot of things about match fixing. No, that's not on. No, no darts player. No, no darts player wants. It's not very. It's not very nice thing to allege to a sportsman or someone who's been struggling like Jamie has. And so I think I think he's perfectly right to just 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 to lead to um, his stance of um, I'm going to come away from social media. I think he's back on now, but yeah, it's it's a strange one. There's there's certain things where I agree with people about about the abuse and about about the things because when they lose a bet, they go and abuse the player. That's not. On. But I also I also on the on the side of fans who give opinions to players about the players about their form about about their flow about everything else. And they conflab it as abuse. It isn't. Um, every, we, we all need a voice on Twitter, um, on Twitter or social media. I, I'm, all, I'm all in favour of um, freedom, of freedom of speech and expression of speech as well. And um, I think darts players should should take a step back on that as well. It's very interesting the topic, isn't it? Because here you have dart players that, when they're throwing well, get all the accolades, all the sponsorships. You know, they get tungsten deals. Some of them book deals, they're making good money, and when things turn, you know, a couple of opinions really hurt their feelings. They're in the limelight. Seems like it's part of the job at times. Yeah, I mean, it's an easy thing to say, but don't don't search for your name on Twitter to see what type of abuse or criticism you get. I mean, people handle it well. I mean, don't handle it well on, well on Twitter, so he's, so he's one. Um, some people don't. Some people want to go to the scrap. If you want to go to the scrap, then expect it to come back to you as well. So it, 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 it's a weird one. I mean, I know a lot of top 16 players, so to speak, uh, don't really read Twitter. They just get their management to put on stuff on Twitter. Now, they're not really interesting things to follow. And um, they're not really engaging with the fans, so to speak. I'm not expecting darts players to sit on there five hours a day to engage with the fans. But I would prefer if they did engage with the fans a lot more than, than just, uh, oh, I'll speak through my manager type of thing. It go, goes two ways. The abuse should not be on. But, be, but if we want darts to be bigger, that's going to stay. So I don't know. So it's, it's one of those things. It's how you deal with it. Absolutely. It's how you deal with everything in life that will set you apart. Attitude really is everything. I know the answer to this one, my friend, but will you be watching the Seniors League? I mean, I can't wait for this. I think the competitive juices are going to flow. Yes, uh, well, and, and that's going to be good because hopefully I might go to one of the days there. If it, wherever it is, it's going to be in the UK. I might go to one of the days there. It looks good. I mean, there's going to be a, a variance of standard again. Where we're going to get people like Tyler and Adams and, and uh, Richie Burnett and, uh, and a couple of others that were average high 80s, uh, uh, 90s, and maybe even 100. But while people, while people like uh, Della and uh, Bob Anderson might struggle a bit. So you, you're going to get like, things like that where the players will struggle when people think, what are they doing this for? But it's going to be a good thing. It's going to be a good event, fun event. And there's going to be a lot of, um, lot of good darts thrown. And, um, and um, it will be a hit, and um, it's been a long time coming, really. All right, I'm going to let you go, my man. I'm busy here watching the World Snooker Championships. Deep Thoughts by High Roller Radio. What if there was animation on the crucible floor like there is on the darts floor, and why don't we see that? I mean, it's the World Championships. 
The intensity in snooker seems to be a bit on the down low. Perhaps more classy? I don't know. Yeah, I think it's because snooker is a bit more a bit more upmarket type of type of thing. It's a bit yeah, snooker has always been been um, a quiet event where where people watch and and so forth. So yeah. It's a bit different to darts, really. I'm cheering for Sean Murphy, and I hope he gives it the gezi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he probably should. Um, I don't really follow Snooker as much as, as other people I, I follow on Twitter do. But, I, I, you know, so um, I can't really comment further on Snooker and what it's like. But, yeah, I think there probably should be a bit more emotion in it as well. Yeah. At T Aki Master on Twitter, the Aki Master, the Rocky of Darts, Aki Balboa. Chris, thank you so much, man. Appreciate your time. Not a problem. Thank you very much for having me on.